Welcome. This is the fourth in a series of podcasts on fetal alcohol spectrum disorders uh, presented uh, by the Great Lakes FASD Regional Training Center through a grant from the CDC. My name is David Wargowski. Uh, this podcast is titled Biological Effects of Alcohol on the Developing Embryo and Fetus. The first consideration in regard to the effects of alcohol on the developing embryo and fetus is how alcohol is distributed within the body once it's consumed. Alcohol, as many of you are aware, is a solvent, a nearly universal solvent, and can pass through both water compartments and lipid compartments very easily. It's also one of only two compounds that is rapidly absorbed directly from the stomach. And so it is readily distributed throughout uh, most areas of the body, enters water compartments and tissues very quickly, and passes through cell membranes somewhat less quickly, but still much more rapidly than many other compounds. Alcohol metabolism primarily occurs in the liver. It's a fairly simple enzymatic pathway that occurs at a predictable rate and so can be mathematically estimated. There is a small amount of alcohol metabolism that occurs in the kidneys with subsequent elimination in the urine, and some alcohol is expired through the lungs, which facilitates the use of breathalyzers. But again, the vast majority of it occurs in the liver. It's a two-step enzymatic pathway. The first enzyme, alcohol dehydrogenase, or ADH, converts alcohol to acetaldehyde. The second enzyme, ALDH, or acetaldehyde dehydrogenase, converts acetaldehyde to carbon dioxide in water. Variants in these enzyme activities can contribute to blood alcohol concentration and also determine blood acetaldehyde concentration. Acetaldehyde is responsible for some of the unpleasant effects of alcohol intoxication, including nausea and flushing. Variants in enzyme activity are in part determined by variations in the genes that produce the enzymes. So there is at least some theoretical basis for genetic contributions to variations in alcohol sensitivity. We can't talk about alcohol exposure to the developing embryo and fetus without mentioning what is known about alcohol metabolism in women. We do know from observation that there are variations in alcohol metabolism between men and women. Women tend to achieve higher blood alcohol content with the same level of alcohol use compared to men, partly because body water volume is smaller than that of men, and also because women as a group tend to have higher rates of alcohol absorption from the stomach than men. Alcohol exposure on the brain has effects on the structure and several aspects of brain function. We know that from observation that prenatal alcohol exposure can have effects on any region or all regions of the brain. MRI and other imaging technologies has allowed visualization of some of these effects. Most notable is uh, overall reduction in the brain size among individuals with alcohol exposure. Particular structures that show demonstrable effects of alcohol exposure include the corpus callosum, cerebellum, and basal ganglia. In this series of MRI images, we can make comparisons between the corpus callosum in exposed and unexposed individuals. In the image on the left, there is a nice white arc of normal appearing corpus callosum tissue. In the middle image, we see disruption of the corpus callosum with an incomplete formation of that structure. And in the image on the right, there is very little developed corpus callosum tissue visible. The other finding to note on these images is the size of the cranium relative to the face is much smaller in the images from the exposed individuals than in the unexposed individual on the left. This is a result of the overall reduction in brain volume. Facial effects that allow us to identify characteristics that help in the diagnosis are likely to be secondary to effects on the developing brain, at least in part. This is because the developing forebrain induces several processes involved in normal development of midline facial structures. Also, eyes develop primarily as outgrowths of the developing brain, so it makes sense that if the brain volume is reduced as a result of alcohol exposure, that the eye volume would also be reduced. And the way we see that manifest on an exam of an individual's face is in the form of small palpebral fissures. Alcohol is nearly unique as a teratogen in the respect that it can cause problems by exposure throughout gestation. There are multiple 
periods of sensitivity to alcohol exposure. Early in embryonic life, which is the first two weeks or so after conception, alcohol exposure can lead to loss of the embryo, but it is very unlikely that alcohol exposure at that time would lead to the birth of a child with manifestations of prenatal alcohol exposure. Exposure later, but still in the first trimester, during the period of organogenesis, roughly three to nine weeks after conception, is the period of time during which exposures are most likely to lead to significant congenital anomalies, including the facial structures that we recognize in individuals with fetal alcohol syndrome, but also congenital anomalies of the brain, heart, eyes, palate, and limbs. Later exposures during the second and third trimesters are less likely to lead to these types of congenital structural anomalies, except in the brain, because brain development continues during this time and it remains vulnerable to the effects of alcohol exposure. These effects primarily manifest themselves in growth impairment and cognitive and behavioral problems, which for most families taking care of individuals with effects of prenatal alcohol exposure are among the most significant challenges that they face. When we look at the cellular biology of effects of prenatal alcohol exposure, we can identify several important processes that are disrupted by these effects. Neurogenesis, the original formation of nerve cells, can be interrupted. Growth and differentiation of neurons is affected in a number of ways. Migration of neurons to their proper location within the cerebral architecture is also impaired. This process is very important to the normal development of intercellular connections and cellular relationships within the brain and has significant functional implications. Alcohol exposure can also disrupt the formation of synapses, the normal communication channels between nerve cells, and also alters the process of apoptosis or programmed cell death, which is important for the normal structural and functional development of the brain. The brain is also unique in its ability to adapt to abnormalities in its development as regions take up the function of other regions that are not developing properly. This plasticity or adaptability is also impaired by the effects of prenatal alcohol exposure. In addition to the structural effects, we know that alcohol can have effects on several other functional and neurochemical processes, including neurotransmitter production and function. The most demonstrable effects are on neurotransmitter receptors. Alcohol exposure prenatally makes these receptors more sensitive to neurotransmitters, especially those involved in excitation. Cells that contain neurotransmitter receptors also seem to be particularly sensitive to alcohol in terms of increased cell death. And we also see altered cellular responses to neurotransmitters in cells that have been exposed to alcohol during brain development. Within cells, there are complex signaling pathways that are important for normal neuronal responses to neurotransmitters and also to cell processing of the messages that neurotransmitters deliver, and many of these processes within cells are also disrupted after prenatal exposure to alcohol. All of these processes result in a number of effects on cognitive development and behavior that are manifest in individuals who are affected by prenatal alcohol exposure. Cognitive development is impaired, often resulting in intellectual disability. In fact, there has been some dose-response relationships developed in regard to this particular effect of prenatal alcohol exposure. A wide range of psychiatric and behavioral problems also result, particularly difficulties with social interaction and executive functioning. For more information on the biological effects of prenatal alcohol exposure, contact the Great Lakes FASD Regional Training Center at the number or address on the slide. If you're outside the Great Lakes region, the link on this slide will connect you to a list of other regional training centers and allow you to identify the center closest to you. Thank you.